that's why I have co-presenters. So um, we will jump in on the recording a little bit into it. This is our real deal to define internships and job shadowing. So when you start thinking about career readiness, um, there is a K-12 plan for them. And so starting at the very beginning with elementary students, obviously you wanna get them involved in career awareness. As they get a little bit older, um, career awareness of like, there's a postman and a doctor and a nurse. Now they start to explore. So they get a little deeper in what careers are all about. And as they get even older, it starts to lean into career preparation. And that's really what we want for our students. Um, by the time they're graduating high school, they have a certain measure of confidence about what they're preparing for and what they're going to do next. Now, any of us at any stage in our life may actually go through these three these stages. So it's not like only children do. Even adults will often become aware and explore and prepare. But we definitely want to get our kids involved in that um, early on. Now, when it comes to career advice, this Gallup survey was very telling because most of our students actually use informal networks um, to start, which would be friends and family. And a lot of times this is why maybe students pick up the career that ran in the family or they tend to lean towards industries that their parents or grandparents or their family was involved in. After that, of course, they listen to their school counselors and maybe do research and media. But, um, and so they get a lot of information out of that. The least used yet most helpful is actually work-based networks. And that's where students themselves actually talk to people who are actually working in the fields. And that is not only the most helpful, but um, the least used. And so the presentation tonight is to kind of help figure out how do we get, how do we tap more into that particular um, network. So before we really get into the meat of the matter, I wanted to kind of go through some of the basic career preparation vocabulary that we'll be talking about tonight. Job shadowing is just a time for a student to observe. You know, that's what they're doing is just trying to find out what people really do in that particular um, job or career. An apprenticeship is a little different. You'll hear it occasionally in our district. You may have heard of the word, but this is more of an extended um, training where a student will not only be on the job getting paid part of the time, but then they actually go into a classroom environment to continue with that study. And it is generally several years long. So that is not what we're gonna be addressing tonight. Although apprenticeship programs and opportunities are still available um, in, our, in our region. The internship is, it can be either paid or unpaid. The key here is that it's temporary and an internship will always have a start date and an end date. And the student that goes into an internship is going to apply some skills that they've actually learned and then also gain additional skills by being in the industry as well. Now, connected to that, of course, is hard skills. And this is something that those of us in education and parents and students, they all know what a hard skill is. That is what you learn in a classroom and, and the grade you get. Or if it's a skill based, you prove that you can do that. So you have the knowledge of something, but that's a hard skill. Connected a lot to internships and job shadowing is you also have to have those soft skills. And that's the ability to talk to other people, um, the social skills, communication, and all of those other kinds of traits that you need in a work environment. Those are super important. And I will say that um, I'm gonna kind of talk a lot about how important soft skills have to be if you want a shot at job shadowing and internships. So this is how soft skills are related, you see. 
Now, all those other little boxes I threw in there, because believe it or not, that they're all connected to career preparation. Sometimes we don't always take advantage of all of them. So yes, we like the word internship, we want the internship, but how is that connected to maybe going to a career fair? You know, really, if a student goes to a career fair and strikes up a conversation with the adult behind the desk at that career fair, you really not only start to build your network, but you also start to gain confidence with your voice in being able to talk to other adults. Um, so taking advantage of that career fair to build your soft skills will make you ready for the other things. Maybe in that networking environment at a career fair, hey, you may find yourself in a job shadowing opportunity after all where somebody would, you know, host a student to, you know, observe for a half a day or a day. Likewise, when you go on tours and field trips, and that's not uncommon for entire classes, you know, you load up a bus and you go somewhere really neat. Um, but in those environments, a lot of times a student becomes part of a crowd, you know, moving around and seeing and listening. But in reality, a student that goes on a field trip still can you know, take the time to ask questions when invited to do so, introduce themselves and really practice that communication. And as you can see, this is where I'm going with it. So when a student listens to a guest speaker and many teachers you know, bring in guest speakers, um, take time to ask a question. Um, and finally, just being a community volunteer and there's so many opportunities for teenagers to um, get out in the community and be a volunteer. And as you know, they again, build up their communication skills and meet new people. So this is all connected. And even though you may want this internship or job shadowing, don't overlook the connectivity of all these other things to build those important soft skills. So let's jump into um, job shadowing. So these are the typical things that happen in a job shadow activity. And I'll let you read that yourself. Um, but it really depends on the host because you know the many hosts that I've worked with, they may do three of the things on this checklist or four of them or something a little bit different. So it really depends on who's hosting it and what they would like to do. Sometimes um, a host that would like to do a job shadow, they think that, oh, I'm just gonna have a student follow me around and you know watch me on the computer. They don't understand that it's truly a planned event. And there's ways to structure that so that truly it becomes an educational opportunity for the student that comes in and um, they have to plan. So, but it's not hard once they, see some sample agendas. A lot of hosts are excited and happy to create some opportunities for the students. So job shadowing is more than just following somebody around in an unplanned um, situation. This is what it is. It's simply a place to observe. You know, typically, although I have um, had a few job shadowing students that were truly interested and had some skills, get a chance to practice a scenario, but that's not the norm. It's usually just, you know, learning. Um, a lot of times it only lasts a half a day. Those are the ones I generally put together. It, they would be only four hours. Although I have done and organized some that were over several weeks, like just a half a day on Tuesday, Thursday. So. They are as varied, again, as the host and what the host is trying to accomplish. It is basically a career awareness and exploration exercise. That's what job shadowing is meant to be. What it's not, it's not an interview. It's not an internship. We'll talk about that later. And it's not an externship, which is a formal way to learn and take it back into the schools. Now, if it's a teacher doing it, yes. Sometimes teachers do go out on an externship, which is like more of a job shadowing over time in the summer so that they can learn what's going on in industry and then take it back into the classroom. 
So that's the difference there. These are just a few snapshots of some job shadowing that we've had for our students. The, the top uh, left was with the Better Business Bureau and those two students got a chance to go into their marketing. They got into their public relations. They did their business side. I think there was four different departments over four hours that those students got almost a one-on-one -on -one with somebody in that, in that field. The one on the right is an architecture company and those two young men had a chance. In fact, um, that particular host is one of them that always liked to put our architecture students on some little task, which was always fun for them. And then the bottom picture was some journalism students that went into community uh, impact news and they got to sit in on some staff meetings and tour their graphic design layout. So. That is an example of some job shadowing opportunities that we've seen in our district in recent years. So job shadowing benefits right here. I mean, you know, students that don't actually go out, how do they know they're really going to like it? You know, if they don't see others that are working in the field firsthand instead of just reading about it or learning about it online, just really having that face-to-face -face and learning. Um, are they going to even like it? Do they have the personality? So knowing these things before they go to college and invest time and money or when they spend all this time, it's better to know that first. I remember one time um, a student got a tour of Google whenever they moved here to Austin and saw all the, the cubbies and cubicles and stuff that a lot of those engineers and computer people do. And that student was like, I don't see myself sitting in front of a computer like that in this environment all day. Those are good things to learn, very good things. Benefits, again, um, comparatively small investment of time and energy. And in reality, students can be pretty young when they go, again, if they have some soft skills. So if a student doesn't have the capacity yet to have um, a conversation with an adult they don't know and to be able to you know, have you know, the ability to ask questions, that's gonna be harder. So they're gonna wanna build those skills um, before. Um, they can decide if they even like it and what they need to know and what they need to do. It does build career confidence and I can't stress that enough because learning how to say I don't like something or I do like something, you know, when you're making these important decisions, you know, that's a good thing to do. And of course, discover new careers and local contacts. We call that um, building social capital. You know, whenever you start to meet people and build that network, having that social capital will open doors later. So definitely a lot of benefits there to um, job shadowing. Now preparing, and again, you can't be too young to prepare for job shadowing really because you're preparing to be a volunteer, you're preparing to ask questions at a career fair, all of these things. So, you know, basic manners, showing up on time, you know, dressing for the environment in which you're, you know, walking into, good phone manners, no gum, all those things that teachers have been telling our students for years, this is important. They're not telling you that just for no reason. It prepares you for the workplace. Um, researching in the community now, and again, this is where advocates, parents, family members can also set these up, right? I mean, you don't need a school district or somebody like us to, to match you if your neighbor or other family member actually has you know, the interest in hosting. Even if you have a LinkedIn account and you have that connectivity, you can actually um, ask. There is a lot of virtual job shadowing that are, is online. I was very impressed with something Georgetown ISD did this last year that I've included a link here. And down here where I have daughters and sons to work, you may have heard of that, take your son or daughter to work day that has resources for structuring an event. And so 
fabulous, fabulous resources. So I've included those in the presentation. So you can check them out. Okay, so moving off into the internship realm, and this is where my co-host will be jumping in momentarily. Um, an internship, here's the difference of what it is and isn't. With an internship, you do have entry-level tasks. Sometimes it is, you know, basic soft skills that they would ask you to be able to um, apply to whatever you're doing. But at the same time, you'll get some training um, to have your current skills enhanced or maybe even get some new training. It is a fixed length of time, but it is not only to explore if you like it, but definitely to prepare you for the next step, which is a difference between a job shadow because the preparation piece is not embedded like it is in an internship. What it's not, it's not employment and there's no promise of employment. This is the kicker. Um, and you may not even get paid, although there are some internships that are paid, but not always. And this is what's important to understand. It's not to replace a regular employee. And that's super important for your host because your host business has to take an employee off the regular role to plan, mentor, prepare the intern. And so it's really is quite an extension for that host to be able to set up an internship. The benefits are similar, of course, you can get that work experience, you can decide if you like it, maybe learn more industries that you met, may not have known before in your current you know, circles, meet new people, a lot of those similar things with the added possibility of hire after the internship that does happen. It's kind of like a, a long um, it, you know, interview over a period of time. And sometimes interns are offered a job, but not always. So with that, I am gonna turn it over to our co-host Gloria, and she's gonna talk about what we have going on connected to this in Round Rock ISD. All right, thank you, Lucy. Um, excited to share this information uh, with everybody tonight about our work-based learning opportunities through our career and tech education courses. Uh, we have several and we may not have all of them listed right now, but this is a good bulk of, of what we are offering. Uh, we have what is called practicum courses as well as uh, career, career prep. So the differences between those two, a career prep course are, are courses generally where students, their junior year, uh, also they can do their senior year or actually have a general course that they are learning soft skills in uh, to support them in, in the work industry area. It, it gives them information about how to go to work, expectations and what to do, but it also gives them opportunity to have a job, find a job in the summer and then come to school and actually get credit, three credits where they're learning, earning credit for working and actually taking the course. So it's a double-edged sword for them. So basically what they're doing is they're, they're getting hands-on work at work and learning while they're at work. And then they're also getting backup skill sets from the classroom and the teacher is, is walking them through um, their experience there and giving them different projects that may tie into what they're doing at work and so forth. So um, we also have practicum courses that, in practicum courses where we actually have students that are really focused in on a career that they are very, very interested in. And so their fourth year, their senior year, they may be in their practicum course actually out there learning in these practicum courses, even some of the career prep courses are paid or are non-paid. With the practicum course, you can actually um, somehow, sometimes only get that experience and have it housed in within your school. So we have a culinary program. Culinary program, they can do things there. They can cater there on the campus. They can um, do different things and prepare meals for staff. And so they can get that actual skill set there. Or if the, the actual teacher wanted them to, they could also get a job outside of, they could be paid or non-paid to also hone in on those career skills as well. So we have um, several practicums. We have a practicum in agriculture. So that's our students that are in ag, in the ag program, and, and they're seeking to be veterinarians. So that fourth year, they may be working actually at a vet office and getting that experience. But they also could be doing a practicum 
inside where they're actually offering up to the community to have pets come out and get shots, or they can also offer a spa day. Uh, so different ways of getting the actual real world experience to see if that's something that they really want to do, as Lucy has alluded to, with some of these uh, work-based learning opportunities. We have great automotive, a couple automotive programs in our district where students are actually working on cars. We have students that actually, in one of our programs at McNeil High School, that they are actually doing uh, internship with Austin Infinity and uh, Toyota. So they're getting both classroom and working on cars at the school, as well as they're being able to have that experience to go out and be in the industry. Um, we have also our education and training students who, who are, they wanna be teachers. And I know that's hard to believe, but they actually wanna be teachers and they're actually going to elementary schools and, and doing some things like that to prepare themselves to work with teachers uh, learn how to work with students and help prepare themselves for that. We also have a huge health science program where we have uh, students that are working on being um, cert they have certifications there where they're certified nursing assistants. So they're able to go to nursing homes if we're able to partner up with some of those uh, experiences or maybe uh, do some type of shadow experience and, and see what's going on in some of our hospitals that may be nearby. We also have a farm tech program and, and, and then we have a marketing program as well where the students are actually doing things that are more tied to the marketing uh, field. So several, several different programs. Um, one of them that's not listed, we even have a, a practical in construction. Um, so we just recently had one of our construction uh, classes that created something from for, student, for uh, actually the nursing home where um, it can affect the community in that way. So we have a lot of things that our students are able to do through work-based learning through our career and tech courses to help them prepare for what they wanna do in the future. And again, as Lucy alluded to, it helps you see, of course, is this something that actually works? One of the things I love about the work-based learning aspect in CTE is that it's, um, other than the fact that you can get these skills both in school and outside of school, uh, it's, it's a lot of it's free education, it's, it's, it's free skills, these things that they'll be able to actually go and start into um, if someone hires them later on, they, they can be working and going to school at the same time and learning how to, to pay for that. Or maybe they're learning more about um, and getting more as, at, uh, um, certification opportunities through our courses um, so they can give them a leg up when they actually leave our career and tech courses. So. Um, some great opportunities there. Lucy um, also has a slide here. Uh, we have some pictures that you can see. We have a student there that is actually reading um, to students there at the elementary school. We have a student, student who's actually welding. We also have a, a welding program where students are learning that. We, are, As you can see, we have, look like students are having fun there, um, having maybe a spa day inside of um, the actual veterinary class. And then we do have a uh, showing of students that are actually, they've been to um, Seton and, you know, be able to, to work on their craft. So again, these are some of, of the opportunities through CTE, the work-based learning. The thing that uh, is very important to know about these work-based learning opportunities that our, our, our uh, students are, are getting credit for the class and they're also getting that experience outside. And a lot of our industry partners love the fact that they're connected to school because it also gives them more responsibility uh, of being there. And then they also have um, someone to call on. If they, they're having a little trouble, they have a way to back up and say, hey, this is also gonna count for great for you as well as you're doing this and learning the skill set." So the uh, partners love that aspect of it. Also, they have training plans that come with this that is somewhat of a little contract that uh, between the teacher, the student and the parent and the workplace that's actually uh, offering the opportunity to the student. And it you know, aligns with our TEKS. The Texas education has you know, different skill sets that they want them to learn in those um, opportunities. So uh, it is well you know, groomed and connected and um, protected within the district, the student and, and for the parent as well. So. Um, that's a little bit about the internship or work-based learning opportunities that we have within our courses. So Danielle, I think you're up next. Yes, thank you. Okay, I'm putting in the chat all these links. Let me make sure they go through. Here we go. Um, so 
In terms of current local opportunities, I will first say that we were supposed to have this presentation uh, back in February, as you all know, and um, the weather did not allow that. So some of the dates for these, um, for if your student is a senior might not apply, but if your student is a junior or younger, then they will. So. Um, but there's still some really good other opportunities. So the first link, um, a couple are related to just some Texas resources in general. Um, the first one is basically it was from a recommendation from three groups for this Texas internship challenge. It came from the Texas Workforce Commission, the Texas uh, Education Agency, and the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board to the governor's office. And they were really challenging industry and employers to partner um, to offer more paid internships for Texas students. So if you go on that website, um, there's a couple things. If you click on the middle of the website, it says texasinternshipchallenge.com. You can search for internships and you can also register and then also that your child um, can put their resume on there and then um, potentially be partnered with different uh, internship opportunities. Uh, and then on that website directly on the left hand side, you can find resources for students such as interview tips. So as they're thinking about uh, possibly engaging in internships. Um, uh, and I see, I'll check on that link in just a second. I see that note. Uh, the second one, um, the Summer Earn and Learn. This is a summer initiative that provides career guidance, hands-on learning and work opportunities to students with disabilities who are aged 14 to, to 22. So if your child fits into that criteria, I would check out that link and see what opportunities are available. Um, the next link, which is internship and enrichment opportunities, um, which I think is the one you all are saying is not working, but hopefully we'll see if we can get that working, is um, it's basically was curated by one of the school counseling teams here in the district. And it has all sorts of different types of internships, including deadlines, um, again, some of which have passed, but um, again, it can be really useful as you're looking towards the future years. And I'll see if I, it might be that your child needs to utilize that link um, with their Round Rock uh, email, but I'll, I'll double check that in a minute. And then um, some of the other local resources, including the Austin High School Summer Internship Program, and then the Williamson County Ladders for Leaders Program, those are um, specific to region. So the Austin one is for students who live in Austin, which we know some of our students in the district do. And they have um, a couple internships that, um, that are actually paid Two of them, they have four different types and two of the types uh, aren't running unfortunately this year. I think just continuing precautions from COVID, um, but the other two are. And then this again would be good for students who are juniors or younger because uh, the application deadline did pass. And similarly with Ladders for Leaders, but this organization, um, like Lucy said at the beginning, I'm on the, the board of this organization and um, provides also paid internships for students in Williamson County and so not just students in the city of Round Rock, but also other areas of Williamson County. And in addition to the internship process they have, they also offered um, some free workshops this year for students. So they talked about just kind of internship 101, uh, how to interview, gave some interview prep and tips and, and such, and how would you conduct yourself um, at an internship. So be on the lookout for those next year around this time, um, a little bit earlier, about February, to um, have your child, if they're interested in uh, getting some basically free resources to support them in that area. And then also in terms of the program of possibly qualifying. And there's two programs with that, um, one for uh, was open to all students and then one that's specific to students from Success High School or open to AVID students uh, specifically. And um, the other piece too, the last couple things is, this might sound um, a little silly, but try Googling volunteering in yada yada. And I know that sounds silly, but there really can be a lot of great things that pop up. And like Lucy said earlier, that um, there really are some great opportunities, even if it's not a traditionally paid internship, but getting that volunteering experience in a local area can be really useful at, in terms of students figuring out what they like and what they dislike. And I'll just say personally, uh, when I was back in high school, um, perhaps your child's age, that I was dead set on being a pediatrician. And um, when I went to college, I, thank goodness, uh, internship, had some internships in uh, the hospital nearby and realized that that wasn't quite right for me. And so 
I think that internships can be great in terms of further solidifying interests, but they also can help us realize that that's not quite the path we wanna go down. So, um, so with that, I will turn it back over to Lucy for the cautionary note. Thank you, Gloria and Danielle. Great information. They have a lot of experience and recognize exactly what this internship piece um, I do have this cautionary note, especially if you're organizing your own opportunity for your, your children. You do want that signed agreement ahead of time um, for both sides. You know, number one, you don't want your student to go in and do things that you didn't expect that they would be doing. So you want to know exactly what they're doing and exactly what they're going to learn. And the, the company needs to benefit as well. So both of them. And the company on the flip side, and I know this may sound goofy, but sometimes they really don't want this teenager around forever. And maybe, you know, they find out after a period of time that maybe it's not working for them to try to mentor this young person. And so that signed agreement helps them get out of that gracefully if needed for the both sides as well. So being you know, clear on what they're gonna be doing, if they're gonna be paid or unpaid, how much time are they really gonna spend there and how, much, how long is that gonna last? All of those are a protection. And so if you think about forging ahead you know, as an advocate for your child, you're gonna to wanna to take a look at that. Gloria or Danielle, do you have anything you wanna kind of add to that? Um, well, I'll just say, you know, that's what I was alluded to also when I was mentioning, um, just to be clear for those that are on uh, and li will listen to this, is those internships and those work-based learning opportunities that, that sp specifically happen to the classroom, they will have some type of, of contract, as I stated before, you know, and that the things that Lucy mentioned there is as far as whether it's paid or unpaid, how many hours you're going to work, how long will the internship last, um, it puts on this on both the student and and the actual industry partner, so they both know what they're getting into. Um, and so, if you you know if you're doing it on your own, you do want to have something in in place that will help you. But definitely, if you do it through uh, the career and tech classes, you'll you'll have that set up for you. Um, it, it's a must. It's, we have to have it. So. Whenever, even with a job shadow, I used to have an agreement because, you know, the parent needed to know that if um, that the student was going to be safe and how they were going to spend their time and maybe they were responsible for the transportation because the district couldn't get involved in that on, you know, personal vehicles. So there was a, a number of things that we put in place so that the parent, the host, the student, and the school were all on the same page, you know, to protect everyone. So that is definitely something to consider if, you, if you're if you moving ahead. So ideally, as we close down uh, to the end of our, our session here, ideally, you'll come away with a better understanding of what a job shadow is and isn't and what an internship is and is not. Um, recognize the benefits that students can gain from participating in those kinds of things. And, you know, I can't emphasize enough to really appreciate the planning and sacrifice that businesses um, go through to host young people in this way. So definitely appreciate that. I did want to, again, mention how students can prepare now, and we've all said it in one way or another. You know, having that student volunteer in the community and talk to adults and really ask those questions on their own. And I, I actually have a story I'm gonna throw in here. Um, I did it during my practice and Danielle saying, yes, tell the story. You know, I had a reputation on my campus for these job shadows. And so a lot of students knew that I was able to make those connections. And so I was leaving work one day and on the curb was a mother and her son in the car. The mother jumped out of the driver's seat and she came over and said, you know, are you the one I think you know about internships, right? And I said, well, I can help a student prepare for an internship. You know, all you have to do is have your student come ask me. And the young, the young man in the driver, I mean, in the passenger side of the car never got out of the car 
to come over to meet me or talk to me or say anything. And so I told the mother, you know, have the student themselves pursue that. And she said, okay. And then she gets in the car and they drive off. And I never met or saw the student ever. That student never came to me. And so anytime parents do ask me about internships or job shadowing, I tell them I'm more than happy to help that young person move forward, but that's who needs to do it. And there are opportunities. Danielle went through a lot of different leads for you, and um, I hope you benefited from it. And of course, this presentation will be available on the website, and there's more seminars coming. So all of that is available in this particular presentation. So with that, that concludes, I'll stop my share at this point and ask Ms. Gloria, is there any questions or chat um, information that we can help address? We do not have any, the, the two things that we, well, you know, I take that back. Are there any suggestions? It just popped in. Uh, are there any suggestions for 11 year olds for this summer? Volunteering in the community, you know, as a teenager, um, again, like Danielle had mentioned, you just, depending on the city or uh, that you live, go volunteering in your city and see what matches and let that young person get out there and be responsible, dress up, go meet people and spend some time just exploring. That's what I would say. Danielle? Yeah, you know, I uh, I was to say being newer to the area, I don't know any specifics, but I would say um, also the other thing I think a lot about is asking your child what they're personally interested in. And so I think it really depends on what your child really likes. Like, for example, if, um, if they are really interested in like maybe they want to maybe be a teacher in the future or like maybe there's a way they can uh help at a summer camp or if they are interested in um you know being going to the police force maybe they could do a job shadow with like the you know the local police force for a day so i think that's another really big piece that's really important too especially when kids are really young to think about that exploration i think that's true also uh, i would add um sometimes kids have things that they love and they're doing while they're on vacation. And, you know, even if say they're interested in the, in what's going on in the hotel industry, they're, they're, they're right there. And I'm, I'm giving you that example because we talk about, we have a uh, career and tech uh, student organizations and we have people that actually compete in different things. And one of that is hospitality services. And when I would tell the students, uh, when they were trying to prepare for a scenario, I said, do you remember the last time you were at a hotel or when you went on a vacation and the experience that you have, can you apply that to this certain scenario? So again, going back to what Danielle said about asking them what, the, what they think they're interested in, sometimes it's right in front of them is what I'm trying to say. And with them being an 11 year old or a young person, an adult would just love to engage in conversation about what they are doing and what their job is like if they're interested. So just you know, going to restaurants, anything like that, sometimes it's right there in front of the student, they just don't know it. So if you can ask that question to find out, sometimes you're already where they need to be. There's another question that popped up that um, was, says my daughter's a sophomore and she's interested in pre-med, what would be right, um, what, uh, the right kind of internship program? Um, what I'll, I'll start if, is uh, being back in, in my high school days, that's what I was thinking a lot about. And um, I will say what's a little tricky right now is just obviously the COVID pandemic. And so um, it might be more difficult, I imagine, to intern have internships at like a hospital and such. But I also would say that um, even thinking, even something like physical therapy or, um, you know, really trying to think outside of the box, even if she, she is interested in one specific thing, like, again, I was interested in being a pediatrician, but even thinking about like something like physical therapy or um, OBGYN or something that's maybe not quite the exact piece, but that could have some connection would still give some experience is the first thought that's coming to my head. And I'll kind of jump into um, for students that are interested in going into the field of medicine, they need to develop their, their understanding of their community and empathy as a whole. So, 
you know, sometimes just knowing what a patient might be going through, not just the physical doctor medical side of things, but the whole family. And I know, for example, in Round Rock, you have the Round Rock Area Serving Center, for example, that, you know, helps support, you know, a lot of our community that may be down on their luck a little bit. And so for a, a medical student to go in and truly develop that sense of community and empathy for people is going to give them a much better bedside manner and practice in really having that compassion for others. So, you know, just looking out into public service opportunities as a whole where they can work with maybe the homeless or the needy, um, I think would be a good um, exposure for a medical student. That's my opinion. We also, we have another question here also. Um, since my child is into robotics and Raspberry Pi kits and is on the lookout for friends doing garage experiments. So they're just wondering if, if we have STEM kind of opportunities um, here at Round Rock ISD. So I'm gonna tell you, yes, we do have STEM type of opportunities through Round Rock ISD. Um, particularly, they, there's an opportunity um, once they get into uh, to middle school, of course, of course, with other clubs and organizations, but at the high school level through our engineering uh, programs, if they're, um, I'm just giving that as, as an example, we have robotics, but we also have engineering uh, courses and classes too that um, will provide them opportunities to meet industry partners in the field, in the field of, of, of STEM. And also they do have uh, clubs and organizations um, through those mechanisms that meet after school and actually have partners that actually come and host uh, some of the experiences that they actually have. And then that's another way of networking when you see someone from Dell or some from, from someone from Samsung actually come and host an event that a club and organization is, is, is hosted on campus and they will invite anybody that's interested in STEM. You don't even have to be an engineering program. Uh, so, um, you know, there, there's different ways to connect, um, you know, with the STEM opportunities at, at Ramrock SD. Uh, Lucia, Danielle, you have any other things you can think of? Well, I know that uh, the high school campuses often host little camps for robotics, especially that first robotics. Um, so they've been definitely there. I don't know about this year, again, because of COVID, I have not seen that posted, but um, that's something to look, at, look out for. I think there was one last piece of um, um, suggestions for a person planning to explore forensics or opportunities based around careers having to do with chemistry. I have, there is a, a summer opportunity for high school kids in forensics that has been posted. It is planning to be virtual at first, but it may be in person, but it's in another state. And I will be happy to dig down that link and that information for uh, the questioner. If you just email me, I will give you what I got in terms of the forensics opportunities. Um, what, one thing I'll add to that too is, so I, um, we, for the Ladders for Leaders, we actually just interviewed students. And one of the students that I talked with, she happened to mention how um, when um, the, you know, when COVID hit and some of the opportunities she would have had last summer weren't available, she actually created an experiment that was related to forensics and had emailed her science teachers to ask for some help uh, in that. And then they weren't really sure, but they said, hey, why don't you like research online? And so she ended up emailing a couple of forensic, uh, I don't know, professors, um, uh, a few across the country, and they emailed her back and gave her advice. And so that was just a really cool way that I, that the student was really, um, thoughtful and, you know, really kind of a go-getter and realize like, okay, this might not be quite right, but uh, in the way that she traditionally hoped that the internship would happen. And I mean, she did something in her backyard, but, she, but I think that just really made me think a lot about the ways that we can be adaptable and flexible. And this new virtual environment does allow us to, you know, quickly get on a Zoom or a Google Hangout to maybe uh, have a conversation with someone that's, you know, across the country that um, we might not have had or thought about doing before. 
Absolutely. The virtual job shadowing that's out there and the different um, websites that will expose students to all kinds of different careers. And so those are posted on our school district website um, where you can actually explore. And I appreciate, yes, the community education link in the chat box for the summer opportunities that have um, been mentioned, some of them. So great, thank you. Any other questions or final thoughts from my delightful co-hosts? Thank you so much, Gloria and Danielle, for hopping on uh, with me tonight to give your experience and expertise when it comes to this topic with internships and preparing kids for careers in the future. Really, thank you very much. So with that, I guess we will go ahead and uh, close for tonight. And we appreciate everybody that's jumped on with us for sure. And um, again, if we can be of any service, you're welcome to reach out and email us and we will certainly try to point you in the right direction. And so be safe, stay safe, and thank you very much for coming.